The NFL announced yesterday afternoon it is appealing the six-game suspension Sue L. Robinson handed down for Browns quarterback Deshaun Watson. And like we stressed yesterday when the news broke, this was expected based upon the CBA and expected because the NFL knows what I know. Six games is not acceptable. And multiple reports indicate the NFL is rightly looking to suspend Deshaun Watson for an entire season, 17 games, with a hefty monetary fine. And that's kind of important here, too. One of the many ooey gross components was the contract that Watson was rewarded with, a monster contract, and how the Browns structured it, where the bulk of the money is after this year in preparation for a punishment. The Robinson ruling was just a suspension, no fine. I bet the NFL wants to change that as they should. And when the league hears the appeal, the ruling is binding. So the NFL can do what it wants right now. That that was collectively bargained. And while I think Robinson was way too light, her word choice will equal the NFL dropping the hammer. She used the exact words I've been using for months on Time to Shine. Sexual predator in describing Watson and his awful pattern of behavior. She called it egregious. But in my opinion, she can't cite precedent because for what Watson did, there is no precedent. The six-game suspension that Ezekiel Elliott received or the Ben Roethlisberger discipline, it's not applicable here. And by the way, the timing of the Stephen Ross six-game suspension, when that story broke, that was not an accident. Frankly, as you know, I think Ross deserved more than he actually received, and I said he should lose the Miami Dolphins. But if Ross got six... Watson should get 17. And I give the NFL credit for being dug into doing the right thing here. And it might mean the messy PR nightmare of the NFL PA going scorched earth on the owners, bringing a lot of things to light. The owners like Ross and like Daniel Snyder and Bob Kraft, among others. But the NFL is also very much aware here of the court of public opinion. The NFL is very aware of people like me calling for 17 games because what Watson did was absolutely horrific. And Robinson Road, he showed no remorse. Sickening. Here's hoping the NFL makes up for Robinson. Yankees, you know, we're going to make a trade by the August 2nd deadline. Luis Castillo from the Reds. That's the perfect pickup. That's a clinch the World Series kind of move. Epic throwback Thursday there, begging my Yankees to go out and make a trade for Luis Castillo. And the Yankees have to be wishing that they listened to me and traded for Luis Castillo after yesterday. He made his Mariners debut, struck out eight in Yankee Stadium, and frankly, looked vintage Luis Castillo. Was absolutely, positively filthy. And the Yankees... Collectively, they looked like they were swinging a wet noodle at the dish yesterday. And Castillo was able to mow him down. Mariners take a series against the Yankees. And they didn't have Ty France. They didn't have Julio Rodriguez. And Castillo was lucky he was going up against Garrett Cole. And I never thought that was going to be the case. Garrett Cole gave up six runs in the first inning. Beautiful day yesterday. Gorgeous, hot Yankee Stadium, and then that. That was wild. Garrett Cole was atrocious. And look at these numbers of futility for the New York Yankees since July 1st. They have more losses than wins, a fat and unacceptable earned run average, and look at all those games allowing six or more runs. That is not winning baseball, it's not Yankees baseball, and there are issues when you look at the pitching. Garrett Cole is an ace, but he hasn't pitched like it. 
Herman has not been good. Nasty Nestor has crashed back down to earth. Same with Talion. Severino obviously can pitch, but he's on the injured list. And I'm excited about Montas making his Yankee debut. But they traded Jordan Montgomery. And I, I was a big Montgomery fan, an innings eater, pitches to the scoreboard, very popular in the clubhouse. He cried when he found out he was getting traded. I'll support the Yankees in the trade because if you watch the Yankees, you know they don't have a legit defensive center fielder. Harrison Bader injured now when he gets healthy. He's going to start playoff games for the Yankees in center field, but this is a bit of a mess. The New York Yankees have not played good baseball. The New York Yankees pitching, starting rotation, and the bullpen has been ridiculously weak. Garrett Cole has been akin to batting practice. That that was unacceptable in a big spot. And I just have this suspicious feeling and nightmare. This postseason, the Yankees are going to wish they traded for Luis Castillo. Good luck, pitchers, indeed. Juan Soto's Padre debut last night, absolutely electric and really a harbinger of things to come. Juan Soto got an unbelievable ovation, sold out crowd in San Diego, saluted the crowd. He showed off that incredible eye at the plate. He was able to rip a single. The crowd was electric. Remember, San Diego is a great sports town. Now a one-horse town with the Chargers in Los Angeles. Oh, by the way, how about Slam Diego? Brandon Drury almost lost in the shuffle. They got him at the deadline. He hit a grand slam. And I thought it was kind of poetic and perfect that Manny Machado hit a home run as well. Just a reminder, he is still the straw that stirs the drink for these Padres. Look, we'll keep showing these wild card standings. And the Padres, obviously, they're going to make the playoffs. I'd make the case the most important thing that happened in the ballgame last night Blake Snell was excellent, and the Padres 1 through 5 have a really solid rotation. They just don't have the upper echelon, top of the rotation pitchers that could be matched up with, let's say, the Dodgers or the Mets in a short series. But Juan Soto energized the clubhouse. Juan Soto means business. The Padres lineup last night, you had Juan Soto hitting second, newbie Josh Bell hitting fourth, Drury who hit it's the grand slam in the first inning. He said after the game he was floating, pure adrenaline around the bases. He's hitting six. He could DH, he could play the infield, play the outfield. Oh, by the way, they're going to get Fernando Tatis Jr. back. Oh, by the way, they picked up Hader, Josh Hader, the closer from Milwaukee, one of the best in the business, major upgrade for the Padres. I still think the Dodgers are the team to beat in the National League. I still think the Mets' top-end pitching is going to be ridiculously tough to navigate in October. But the San Diego Padres, whose talents and confidence. They are now officially legit World Series contenders. And seeing that scene in San Diego, a fan base, a sports fan base, Chargers, Padres, they've been through hell and back. That was flat out awesome. The San Diego Padres with Juan Soto and company, they are ready to rock and roll. We're shouting out football on a Thursday. We have football tonight. The Raiders and Jaguars face off in the Hall of Fame game this evening. Two teams that enter this season with a renewed sense of optimism. And let's start with the Raiders. You now have Devontae Adams catching passes from Derek Carr in a Josh McDaniels offense. And understand, tonight in the Hall of Fame game, not going to see anyone on the field. Carr's not playing. Adams isn't playing. But I think that McDaniel's presence on the sideline is a huge deal. New head coach, new day, new direction. Last year on so many levels was a hot mess for the Raiders. And they still found a way to make the playoffs. 
I think Derek Carr is going to have the best season of his career. I love not only the Adams pickup, but what they did with Chandler Jones. I thought that was an incredible move to bolster the defense. And I think the Raiders are a top five team in the AFC. And I think they're going to win a minimum of 11 games this season. On to the Jags. Also have a new head coach in Doug Peterson. New number one wide receiver in Christian Kirk. And... My guy and Trevor Lawrence looking to improve upon his rookie year. Now Lawrence, just like Carr, not going to play tonight. But listen, if you're a Jags fan, you have to be fired up about Trevor Lawrence this year. Doug Peterson is everything in terms of a coach, a mentor, a great person, an offensive mind that at the end of the day, Urban Meyer wasn't. Last year was a failure. By the way, I think Jacksonville had a phenomenal offseason. I didn't like the Walker draft pick, number one overall, but he's going to help. Look, Kirk got a lot of money. Ingram was a bust in New York, but these guys all count as upgrades. Same with Brandon Sheriff and Zay Jones. And it's all set up for Trevor Lawrence to live up to the expectations to be a generational quarterback. Last year was a fiasco, a mess, a nightmare in every possible way. I still think that Trevor Lawrence is going to be elite at the quarterback position, and this is going to be a monster year for the Jaguars. Travis Entienne is not going to play tonight. Listen, he's going to have a great season. His rookie year didn't see the field at all, got hurt in camp, and never played a down. I think Jacksonville is going to surprise some people, and I'm expecting huge things out of Trevor Lawrence for this upcoming season. When asked about quarterback Daniel Jones, new Giants head coach Brian Dayball said he has a ways to go. Yikes. Not exactly a ringing endorsement of his quarterback. And listen, I'm not surprised. Brian Dayball is a straight shooter. And Brian Dayball wants a quarterback who can protect the football. And Brian Dayball wants someone who's going to have command and control of the offense. And frankly... Daniel Jones just does not fit any of the above. I mean, the interception numbers, the turnovers, it just jumps off the screen. In addition to the win-loss record and in addition to the completion percentage, and I think this would be the last year that Daniel Jones wears a Giants uniform, and frankly, I would just play Tyron Taylor. Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa met the media to talk about, well, everything, and... Stephen Ross was brought up, and tampering for Tom Brady was brought up, and Sean Payton was brought up, and why not? It's all applicable and in the news. Bottom line is, this is a gigantic year for Tua Tagovailoa and the Miami Dolphins. So there's no excuse. And now, the Stephen Ross situation in terms of tanking and tampering, it's obviously omnipresent distraction noise for everyone in Miami right now. Fair or unfair, that's just a fact. But... It's also a fact to say that Tyree Kill is a stud, best uh, speed receiver, who takes the top off the defense in the game. I mean, Waddle and Wilson, and you look at Edmonds and Mostert at the running back position, and you know, what they bring to the table at the tight end position, and the defense, I mean, it is pretty awesome when you look at the weapons for new head coach Mike McDaniel. So there's no excuse here when it comes to Tua, and frankly, the win-loss record for the Miami Dolphins. There is a ton of pressure on Zach Wilson and Robert Sala for the Jets, both in their second season. New York really had a tremendous offseason. Phenomenal draft, big-time free agency period. And when noted that Robert Sala, talking to the press yesterday, said, Joe Flacco is the starting quarterback. Joe Flacco? What year is it? What day is it? Basically, what he's trying to do is tell Zach Wilson, who has been, according to reporters like our friend Brian Costello over at the New York Post, Wilson has been very inconsistent during training camp. He's letting Zach Wilson know it's go time because he doesn't really think Joe Flacco can be a starter still, right? Steelers and wide receiver Deontay Johnson today agreed on a two-year, $36.7 million extension 27 mil guaranteed. I absolutely love this move for Pittsburgh. 
Listen, I talked to Cam Hayward, superstar of the Pittsburgh Steelers on my SiriusXM radio show yesterday. He said that everyone in Pittsburgh knew that they would get something done with Johnson. They did. The numbers are fantastic. The contract is reasonable. I'm telling you, you're going to see the Pittsburgh Steelers win at least 10 games and be a surprise team this season. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.